Hi, it's me again, Les Hall, and I want to tell you some more about the thermal braille invention today. Uh, some new ideas have come up from some people who mailed in, emailed in, and uh, talked to me on Skype, uh, two friends of mine, and someone commented in the comments something very supportive about wanting to be helpful. Um, to reiterate what the invention is all about, is it's a panel that a blind person can feel with their fingers and just like braille where you feel all these bumps and it tells you what the letters are well you don't feel bumps you feel warm spots and cool spots and the warm spots are bright places and the cool spots are dark places and the medium temperature spots are me are grayscale spaces and what, what way it works, whoa, I got a prototype way over here, just to show you, to remind you from the first video, here's a prototype, it has the rocket switch, with a cover, really cool, it has a sensor array that is 5 pixels vertical by 5 pixels horizontal, for a total of 25 pixels. That's not very many, but it's a prototype. It's just for testing. And what I did is I made various shapes on it, an L shape, a plus sign, and so forth with cardboard cutouts by exposing it to sunlight with the cardboard cutout over, over it while it was powered up. Then you kill the power, and then you, you, you feel it. You feel, rub your finger over the array, slowly. Not like that, but slowly. And guess what? You can detect the image. You can discern between an L and a plus and a tree, a triangle, or whatever. So, Thermal Braille is here today in my hand. And I am giving this invention to the world for free. I'm trying to protect it with the GNU General Public License and or the Creative Commons artistic license, whichever is more closely applicable to the situation, because there is no license for intellectual property for people like me who want to uh, make it publicly available but still retain some rights over it. Okay, So if you're a legal eagle, some kind of legal bulldog type, you're involved in the USPTO, you're in the United States government, somebody like that, Think about the possibility, or freedom individualist, think about the possibility of developing an intellectual property license for people like me and other people who come up with bright ideas and want to share them with the world. Alrighty, so we've got some little time left. Raz and Kaz, uh, the resistive display. Not only can we use cadmium sulfide cells, which automatically adjust themselves based on the incident light, to produce their own th thermal temperature on an individual pixel basis, like in that invention I just showed you. But also, what I thought of prior to that, prior to the date of this invention, which for the record is early March of 2012, it is now late February of 2013. Uh, the, uh, no, no, it's early February, yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, where are we? Oh, if we make a resistive panel, not, even simpler, even cheaper than a uh, cadmium sulfide panel, a resistive panel, but instead of having just uh, a conductor on the top and a conductor on the bottom, or finger interwo interleaved conductors, we have... RAS row address strobe conductors and CAS column address strobe conductors horizontal ones and vertical ones and we can individually strobe each of these conductors in pairs one row and one column this addresses a single section of the resistive material and heats it up to the desired temperature we then do a raster scan <laughs> And we cover the whole plate, and now so all of a sudden, under computer control, we have created a thermal image 
from the mind of the computer on, uh, uh, you know, it could be a braille image, could be a text image, could be a picture of a scene in uh, a movie, anything. The, the, the camera picture, whatever. In grayscale, we don't have color yet, we just have grayscale. At least we have grayscale, not black and white, it's grayscale. Uh, let's see. Um, the, the, so the Raz and Kaz invention existed prior to, as a precursor to the self-adjusting cadmium sulfide, thermal braille invention, and that's that. Spectacles. JB's concept of spectacles, which he conveyed to me, my friend JB. Hey JB, what's up bro? Over uh, Skype video was close your eyes and little eye shaped curved things go over your eyelids maybe they're connected in the middle like some kind of goggles your eyelids are actually very sensitive to uh, touch and heat and things like that they got a lot of nerve endings make a little teeny little itsy bitsy pixel itsy bitsy polka dot bikini pixel array on the inside of that and let it be a cadmium sulfide cell array, and then you're wearing, you I don't want to show you that list. You're wearing, you're wearing glasses around your ears and stuff, you know. And those have lenses that shine the image on the little cups that are over your closed eyes, and uh, you, you see, you just see in stereo. You see, you, you see in the what's going on. Only you're blind or visually impaired, and you see a thermal image of the stuff that's going on around you. Pretty cool idea, JB. Nice one. It was a simpler spectacle idea from Ixmo involving having one temperature output device on the nose and one on each ear, and you could navigate through the differential. Uh, I didn't like that idea that much, but Ixmo had a lot of other really good ideas. Ixmo is a dude in England who I really like. He's a very imaginative and creative friend of mine. We have long involved conversations, also through Skype, uh, over the future of technology and where the 3D world is going. And he gives me ideas and I run off and write programs about him, even though he doesn't have a technology background. He's got a uh, literary background. He knows about Shakespeare and poetry and things like that that I don't know much about. But together we can see the world and, and imagine it and we have wonderful conversations. And here's some ideas that Ixmo came up with. Several wonderful ideas. Light beams. So you are equipped with some kind of glasses like that or some kind of panel you can hold, you know, uh, something like that. Some way that you can navigate uh, the world and perceive the world around you at a slow frame rate uh, by, by touching this panel or with your eyelid spectacles whatever uh, how are we doing on time? gotta hurry up um, <laughs> so he slows down <laughs> Duh. Uh, eyelid spectacles oh, oh gui guided light guiders light, light beams, laser beams, stuff like that Pointed around so blind people can, with little little chirpy noises where they are, so blind people can look around, see those things, and have the world painted for them as to where they can walk. Where is the sidewalk? Where is the sidewalk not? And such light beams can be projecting advertising images on the ground or art on the ground or something imaginative and creative and artistic and nice that in, improves the environment. Be nice for everybody. Public signage, very good idea, Ixmo. Uh, public signage makes signs in the public like this for blind people and visually impaired. Yeah. GPS map app. We've got a thermal display. Let's overlay it or connect it to the front or back or whatever of a mobile unit, your phone, your iPad mini, whatever you got, whatever you're walking around with, your Android. Uh, let it be a Raz and Kaz, so that 
Rising Cast Resistive Display so that you can put any image you want on it and do a GPS map app and oh it'd be great between that and the glasses we'll have blind people driving <laughs> here's the last thing we need so they can drive no they're not probably not <laughs> the fan and Peltier cooling a Peltier device is a little magical thing a little semiconductor thing they're a little expensive they come in all kinds of different sizes and wattage capabilities and whatnot. You apply electricity to it, a DC voltage, and one side gets hot and the other side gets cool. It's a heat pump. It pumps heat from one side to the other. We use them in satellites. We use them in little coolers to cool a few sodas for you. You can buy at Walmart or wherever you like to buy. Um, and uh, they usually work in conjunction with a fan. So with and without fan or fan alone, or Peltier device alone, we can increase the frame rate of the device, of any thermal braille display device, by cooling it down between frames with a blast of cool air, or blast of coolness uh, between heat ups. And then we might, we might get ten, a frame a second. Wouldn't that be awesome? One frame a second you, you couldn't even feel it that fast. You'd be rubbing your hand all over it all the time. Okay. Uh, and one technical detail. I do want to convey to people, one guy missed the point, and then I explained it to him, and he said, oh, yeah, nice, I like that idea. So what I didn't convey properly in my video first was that, first of all, the cadmium sulfide cells are all connected in parallel. Okay. That means you can make a panel of it. The, the panel can be constructed of one sheet of the material. Don't even have to deposit a pattern of little dots. Just a sheet of the material. Just scoop the stuff on with a sponge, let it dry, or whatever you do with it, the cadmium sulfide, and then electro deposit some metal on the top and maybe the bottom, a screen on the top and a screen on the bottom, make a sandwich with the cadmium sulfide in the middle, or an interleaved finger pattern on the top, something like that, and you got yourself the panel. Cheap, available, costs like 10 bucks, every blind person can have one. Um, so that's that about the technology. And when, how do I finish up? Just two minutes left. Uh, oh, Lighthouse for the Blind. I finally just got through on the telephone to my local chapter of Lighthouse for the Blind here in San Antonio, Texas. And they have uh, the information to find the first video. And I'll upload this second video. It was a little difficult. I called them Monday twice, sent an email Tuesday, and an email Thursday morning. It is now Thursday noon. And the secretary of the president finally answered. I was like, do I have to bang my head against the door to wake you people up? But they're actually a very wonderful organization. I slipped through the cracks, but they're really good people who care. As far as I know, I did talk to them at the time of the invention. And we were going to meet and stuff, but I couldn't get to them because uh, I got health problems and stuff. But anyway, long story short, let me close out the video by saying thank you, everybody. I hope to develop a good working relationship with Lighthouse for the Blind, maybe some other organizations, maybe a cadmium sulfide manufacturing company. Transfer this technology, get it out in the world, help people, and make the world a better place. Praise the Lord.